Hello, my name is Chris Murray, and I'm Director of Design at the Bresel Group in Philadelphia. And I'm going to talk today about how moving the color selection process from the emotional to the more rational can help us as designers and help our clients. We are a product development consultancy based in Philadelphia that spans industrial design, user interface design, engineering, and technical innovation. We deliver innovative product solutions to our clients in the consumer, industrial, and medical categories. I'd like to take you through three project examples today of how our approach to product color selection can change at Bresler Group. In the first two examples, I'm going to briefly illustrate how color options can be highly restrictive in the field of medical devices and moderately restrictive in the area of branded industrial tools. My third example is more thorough in the consumer product space and illustrates how we've developed a process at Bresler Group that makes color selection less emotional and more rational for both ourselves as designers and for our clients. Before I put this presentation together, I asked my colleagues what product color selection meant for them. I asked our different industrial designers, user interface designers, and project managers how they approached the task of color selection. I found it fascinating that the subject of color could stimulate so many different opinions and perspectives, especially the differences between those of industrial designers and those of user interface designers. Those opinions from colleagues varied from the very soft and humanistic to opinions that were grounded in logic, reason, and commerce. The opinions that I received highlighted that any attempt at a meaningful color selection process on products was limited without understanding that attitudinal and functional connection to the product's end user. And as most professionals involved in product development know, product color selection without a process can be scary for us as designers and for our clients. So this first brief example covers some of the challenges when dealing with highly restrictive color selection in the field of medical devices. Here, color preferences tend to be defined by the medical device category norm, which is often whites, pale grays, and limited color accents of maybe blue or teal, or by the functional meaning that different colors can have for end users. This is a small example from HE75, the American national standard for human factors in the design of medical devices. While this is a North American focused recommendations document, it nicely illustrates how the meaning of color can vary by national culture and have potentially hazardous consequences if used incorrectly on medical devices. It also goes on to make recommendations regarding the use of specific colors, both on the physical device and its user interface. As you can see, there is a good part of the color spectrum covered by these recommendations, and this can make color options available to the designer highly restrictive. We design medical devices for BD, Becton and Dickinson, and here are some examples from a user interface that we developed for a BD mass spectrometry lab device. Here we were challenged to create a balance in color selection between functional meaning and communicating the BD brand with its distinctive humanistic warmth. While working on a visual brand language project for the complete family of BD medical lab equipment, we researched the landscape of colors that was used by their competitors and themselves. It is interesting to note that the landscape is dominated by blues and teals and that colors get progressively diluted and lightened as they go from the logo on the left to the website communication in the middle to the actual product on the right. As a result, we have this largely white, pale gray, with perhaps highlights of blue or teal, physical product landscape, communicating aspects such as cleanliness and hygiene. 
This image shows one of the lab devices that we designed as part of that BD visual brand language project. In the design of the BD Max for molecular diagnostics, we were challenged to create a distinctive color palette that would not be in conflict with that category norm of whites, pale grays, and silver metallics. Rather than add color accents to the physical parts, we explored unique ways to light the unit in a distinct but not overbearing manner through the use of colored LEDs and tints of different plexiglass. The resulting blue interior lighting became a fundamental part of BD's visual brand language for their lab equipment and a part of their overall color palette. It's a strong color signature that's functional and only apparent when the product is operating correctly. In my second color ex selection example, I'd like to show how color can be moderately restrictive in the area of industrial hand tools. Here, color preferences tend to be defined by competitive brand ownership and what parts of the color spectrum are restricted as a result. In this project, we were tasked to review the visual brand language for Thomas & Betts, a manufacturer of electrical crimping tools and associated accessories, which you can see positioned on the upper right. Uh, these are their older products. As you can see, the competitive color landscape that other brands owned was quite restrictive. Our recommendation in this case was to refine that use of orange, which they were already doing, and own this unoccupied part of the spectrum. The final resulting product range fine-tuned and amplified that core orange while complementing it with blue accents that both link to the Thomson Betts logo and fulfill a functional feature highlighting purpose. It's important to note that in this example how different materials and finishes are essential complement to the core color selection, something that I'll cover in more detail in my next example. So this is my third project example for today, which I'm going to cover in more detail. This project involves consumer mobile accessories, where the unrestricted color selection can at first seem potentially daunting for the client and for the uh, designer. Here, color preferences tend to be defined by consumer attitudes, which can obviously be quite varied. I'm also going to introduce the principle of considering color to be quite distinct from materials and finish selection. Here, materials and finishes tend to influence the perceived value of the product, and the actual color selection is independent. At Bresler Group, we realize that color selection can be challenging and work closely with Ryko Morrison, a West Coast color consultant, to develop a more predictable methodology for color selection. It's not a formula and it doesn't remove the designer's skill, but we believe that this tool guides us through color selection in a less emotional and more rational manner. In this tool, the map on the left shows how color options can be derived from different consumer attitudes. And the chart on the right shows how different material and finish options can communicate different value perception to the user. This mouse from Microsoft is a great example of how color can be utilized to appeal to different consumer attitudes. On this map, product value is all the same, all these options retail for the same price. The horizontal scale shows attitudes from understated on the left through to expressive on the right. The vertical scale displays attitudes from youthful at the bottom to mature at the top. So in the upper left, we have the mature and understated quadrant, which is largely black and neutral solution. Lower left has an understated color solution also, but through bright white, it appeals to a more youthful attitude. The upper right quadrant uses rich deep blue to create a mature and more expressive color appeal. And finally, in the lower right quadrant, multiple bold colors appeal to youthful and expressive attitudes, where the user is more confident about making a bold color statement. Some designers are 
attempt to attach perceived monetary value to different colors. At Bresler Group, we found it more useful to remove color from the value equation and utilize different materials and finishes to communicate different values. This iRobot Rumba is a great example of how different materials and finishes can be utilized within the limits of a targeted color quadrant. Here, metallic and gloss finishes help to emphasize different feature-driven value tiers, all within that mature and understated color quadrant, which is largely blacks, grays, and silvers. When you put the two elements of color and value tiers together in our positioning tool, the designer is able to plot color, material, and finish options in a structured and more rational manner. Each color quadrant can have different color options, but they can share the same material and value tiers. For this project, we were asked to develop a new visual brand language that included color and branding execution for the Ventive brand of mobile accessories. These accessories consisted of smartphone or tablet chargers, portable batteries, and associated cables and connectors. This was a relatively young brand that inconsistently mixed source products with some unique design products. It was also largely black in color with a mix of materials, finishes, and varying brand executions. Which was not that different from the color landscape of their key competitors, mostly black in color with limited color and light accents. For our color positioning tool to be effective, it was essential that we work with our client to define the target market and users. Here, the new range of mobile accessories was to tightly target professionals whose working habits placed high demands on their mobile devices and mobile accessories. The lead target user included business travelers and highly mobile professionals who could find themselves using their car, an airport or a coffee shop as their place to do business. Given that mobile professional focus, our next step was to create visual user persona for each of the color quadrants that helped our client understand the range of attitudes. This is an important part of the positioning tool. We take time to select persona images that reflect the quadrant attitudes and they often become a visual tag throughout the process of integrated form and color development. As you can see, the personas are not age related. For example, an older user may have a relatively youthful and expressive attitude to color as seen in the lower right. Likewise, a younger user may have a mature and understated attitude to color as seen in the upper left. Working with our client, we were able to dismiss the youthful expressive color quadrant as not a prime target for their brand and their products. They were keen to communicate a more serious and business-like brand characteristic. In parallel, we researched and presented a range of material and finish options that were appropriate to the category. We showed the client how different materials and finishes could communicate different value tiers. So in the lower tier, you have baseline material, resin, and texture options. In the middle tiers, options become more sophisticated, with the introduction of con contrasting trim pieces, painted effects, high gloss coatings, and soft touch paint. In the upper tier, materials and finishes become more integral and authentic, so trim becomes real aluminum, the metallic becomes impregnated in the resin, and the tactile rubber feel is via twin shot or overmold. At this stage, our client was also get, already getting very interested in the tactile qualities of soft touch and how this would potentially resonate on portable hand-carried products. So the next step in the positioning tool is to combine those user persona images with relevant color trends to the category. So in this mature understated quadrant, we introduce color combinations of neutral blacks, grays, and silvers. And we added material and finish examples from other relevant products so that our client could start to understand how they could combine with color to create different attitudinal appeal and different value perceptions. Here the quadrant is relatively restrained, 
but retains mass market appeal. In the upper right mature and expressive color quadrant, colors become more adventurous and progressive. The deep red and blue body colors or minimal pops of accent color are still mature but project a more expressive and distinct attitude to color. Again we select corresponding reference products to create a, a map of potential color and value possibilities in this mature and expressive quadrant. The final color attitude of interest for this project was the youthful and understated quadrant. Here black-white contrasts, whites, pale greys combine with minimal bright accents to create a fresh, pure and more casual perception. Often referred to as the apple light -like quadrant, this youthful and unstated attitude is all about uh, small controlled pops of colour, sometimes in hidden places. So when we put this all together into a map of our defined colour quadrants of interest, our client can better understand how those end user personas can drive different colour, material and finish options. Of course, this is only part of the overall design effort on this project. Color, material and finish exploration is being carried out in parallel with form development and the same user personas are helping to drive direction there too. In this slide, we've jumped ahead to where one of the new products in the range, a multi-function travel charger, is being used as a vehicle to execute different color and finish options. Mainly black, grey and silver options occupy the upper left mature understated quadrant. Neutral black white with bright colour accents occupy the lower left youthful understated quadrant. And more adventurous deeper colours are in the upper right mature and expressive quadrant. With our client we decided that a more adventurous brand demanded, demanded a more distinct approach to colour. The upper right quadrant was selected as the most preferred to target the right consumer, have mass market appeal and to make a brand statement. This is an abbreviation of the colour exploration work done in the, this preferred mature expressive quadrant where we considered those deeper and richer colours. Also the orange of the company logo was fine-tuned and utilised in different aesthetic and functional ways on these colour options. Here we shortcut again to the final colour preference which took more colour refinement and research ver verification than is shown in, in the slide. Different tones of blue-grey combine with limited and controlled orange accents. Matte soft touch combines with high gloss to create areas of tactile interest. The final product range may not have included those deep and rich red or blue body colors that we considered along the way, but it is a significant step away from the competitive landscape of largely black products. For our client, both the form and the color solution had to be distinct and it also had to communicate that professional and purposeful characteristic. So in summary, uh, we believe we have a color positioning tool that is helping us to create more rational and manageable color selection, both for us as designers and for our clients. And in terms of the major steps, one, it's essential that you identify your user target and those key users. Two, map what those user attitudes are in terms, in, in terms of colour. Three, map material and finish options that can communicate different value tiers. And four, combine both the colour and the material and finish options to create a map of targeted colour options for your targeted users. Thank you for your time today. I hope this has been useful. I'm Chris Murray from the Bresler Group in Philadelphia and this brand lang visual brand language case study can be found along with others on our recently launched product branding website at breslergroupbranding.com. Thank you.